back to another live with astronomer um, and so today i just want to make kind of a quick video or not really a quick video but video on one of the probably most high impact features in uh, the new airflow 2.7 update and that is now the ability to set your airflows python version um, so as some people know i won't even say most uh, in airflow 2.7 they drop support for python 3.7 um, but what it opened up is now you can specify which python version you'd like to use when you're installing airflow um, and the reason that's great is because before the only real way you could install a or use a different python version um, was by creating python virtual environments within uh, your airflow environment and then using those to run your tasks um, so here you know I have kind of an example implementation of that. Um, so for uh, Astron 7.5, this is I think Airflow 2.5, um, where create a Python virtual environment just so I could use Python 3.8. Um, and then, you know, whenever I wanted to run any of those uh, Python tasks, I would basically have to, you know, use that virtual environment, initialize it, uh, re-import any libraries I'm using within there um, to actually run uh, those tasks. And that's just because Snowpark um, had to be run in Python 3.8 because that's what Snowpark supports. Um, so now, instead of having to do this kind of work around every time I want to use um, something other than Python 3.9, uh, I can just add this handy dandy uh, affix to the end of, or actually, sorry, I need to switch screens so you guys can see this, um, where now, to change your Python version, um, all you'll do is just add this uh, dash Python, uh, dash 3.9 or dash 3.10 here, save it, um, and then Astro dev restart. So I'm using an Astro image here, um, but I'll show you how to just do it if you're using open source Airflow as well in a second. Um, where now, so I'm gonna quick kill my old instance with 3.9 and then rebuild a new instance with Python uh, 3.10. Uh, so much easier uh, and it's also a global uh, variable so you know if you're using all your different tasks um, in or need python 3.10 you don't have to just you keep using python virtual environments as a wrapper um, and you're just basically stuck with using python um, so much less hacky of a way to use different python versions um, now you know having them set as a global environment version as well much uh, just you know, smoother UX there, obviously. Um, as you can see, you know, pretty easy to switch. Um, obviously, you know, if I had dependency conflicts here from using different Python versions, I wouldn't want to make that switch. Um, but it's pretty easy to, you know, build and rebuild your image with uh, different Python versions, especially if you're using the uh, Astro CLI. And then if I pull up the command to actually um, install different Python versions um, via open source Airflow download. So, Let's say you are pip installing. So let me actually clear this. Let's say I am pip installing a new distribution of airflow, bringing a celery constraint. And now I can set my um, constraints on 2.7 of saying, hey, I want to use whatever Python version I set here. So in this one, it's uh, 3.8. So here I'm installing a you know, new dependency of airflow. I'm actually going to command cancel this because I don't want to um, actually install this, but this is how you would install it if you were running uh, open source Airflow as well. Um, so again, you really do not dependent on that, uh, Python mm -hmm. virtual environment operator anymore. Obviously, you know, if you have a DAG where, Hey, you know, different tasks need different dependencies, you know, then your Python virtual environment operator is still a good option. Um, but I just wanted to show you, you know, Hey, this is how you can make your life a little bit easier set global Python um, and just make more people aware of this new feature um, because it kind of slipped through under the radar in docs. Um, so that is really all I had to show you today because um, it's really not that complex a feature, but it's really powerful. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed this week's Live with Astronomer. Uh, tune in next week where we'll be going into a real life use case of Airflow to that we use internally to manage uh, customer service alerts um, and all the different funny business around that. So processing tickets, um, and I won't spoil too much of it. Uh, and we're going to have one of the members of the CS team on there to actually discuss it with us. So really exciting stuff.